good to be back with you going down the road. Uh, you know, I want to thank uh, I want to thank the folks at Back TV for covering my keister yesterday, so that I could uh, do what I got to do in radio. Sometimes I'm not going to get the opportunity to be here, and and sometimes you're going to see guest hosts in this chair. Tyler Axness is going to be doing some shows pretty soon, as is Jim Shaw. But uh, every now and then, uh, I'm not going to be able to make it. And so that's just one of them. So, you know, th- that's the beauty of what we're doing here on Beck News, which is doing local, uh, doing stuff that's, uh, that involves the exact time that we're doing it. And so if we can't, we won't. And, and I like that about this job. A um, lot to do today. Sarah Heinrich's going to join us. Uh, she's a farm and ranch director with my other employer, KFGO, and she's part of the Growing Harvest Ag Network. In fact, she's the boss of that. And so she's heard as one of the top farm broadcasters in the uh, country. And if you don't believe me, just go ahead and look at the awards list that she's received nationally. So we'll get a chance to visit with Sarah in a little bit. Also, we're going to get a chance to visit with Jeb Williams. Last day, no complaining. Today's it to get your deer license application in. And so we're going to talk to him about that, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, how the deer season overall is going. So, but first we're going to be joined by Jack Seaman. Now, some of you are going to recognize that name because Jack has run races that I don't think he believed even himself that he was going to win. He tried to carry a message. He tried to make a, make a point about an independent uh, third party. And I think he did a fabulous job of it. Uh, Jack is uh, the owner of, uh, you know, a, a place that understands and appreciates what you have. Okay, uh, that's the key. He understands and appreciates what you have. Mindac Gold and Silver uh, is a place that uh, deals in cryptocurrency. I don't understand it. Today's a day to learn more about it. Jack, good to have you coming down the road with us. Hey, Joel, great to be with you. Thanks for having me on. All right. The obvious question is, what is cryptocurrency? Well, yeah, let's let's do a crypto 101. Um, cryptocurrency is a digital asset. It's a digital currency. It doesn't exist in the real world. You can't hold it in your hands. You can't physically touch it or put it anywhere. So it just exists in the digital realm. And there's a lot of different digital currencies out there. There's 1,200 of them the last time I... I checked, but you know, there's a few of the big boys, a few of the main players. I think most people at this point have heard of Bitcoin and they've heard of Ethereum. And that's what we're talking about when we refer to cryptocurrency as Bitcoin and and similar digital tokens like that. And they're assets, they have value. You can store money in digital assets or you can spend it like you uh, spend cash in your wallet. Lots of online stores and even some physical stores like mine accept cryptocurrency as payment. So it's quickly evolving into something that everyone should know a little something about. So when you say it's digital and it's not in your hand, how do you know then as somebody who accepts it that they have it versus just tells you that they have it? Um, well, the uh, the wallet that you have on your phone is kind of like the send and receive function of cryptocurrency. And there's lots of different wallets you can choose from. Just like when you walk into JCPenney to buy a wallet for your back pocket, you can choose from different styles. It's similar in that regard. And so when you purchase or obtain cryptocurrency, you put it in your wallet, just like you would put cash in your wallet. And when you send it to a merchant or to another individual, your wallet tells you, hey, I sent this much cryptocurrency to this wallet address, and that way you know that the transaction was confirmed. What do you do in the beginning to get it? I mean, what what do I do to get cryptocurrency uh, so that I can make a point to Jack, buy something in his store, uh, you know, transact business? How do I get cryptocurrency? Well, there's a couple of different ways. Um, one popular way is to open an exchange account on a website such as Coinbase or Gemini or Uphold. There's several different websites out there and just consider them cryptocurrency banks. Instead of going to your local Bell Bank, you hop on Coinbase.com, you fill out a form just like you would when you open a bank account, you give them some information and then you can purchase crypto on the, your uh, online exchange with funds from your bank account and you can sell your crypto and take the money from your sales of your crypto and put it back in your bank account if you want. The other way is to physically do it and that's what I have in my store, Joel. I have a Bitcoin ATM. 
you can walk into my store with cash money and walk out with cryptocurrency, or you can do the vice versa. You can walk in with crypto and walk out with cash. So there's a couple different ways to get the job done. So as you do this, is this, you know, Jack, you're a younger man than me, and you've always been on the edge of, you know, you've always been uh, someone that isn't afraid to look uh, to what the the next thing of the future is going to be. Is this a generational thing? Is this your age and younger that understands uh, Bitcoin and understands cryptocurrency? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, and and I'm not exactly a young whippersnapper, Joel. We're pretty close. But, um, you know, the, the younger generation is definitely embracing this at a, at a much higher level than, than the older generation. Us old guys, we don't get it, right? You know, it, we come from the school of if you can't hold it, you don't own it kind of thinking. And you can't hold cryptocurrency and it. it you know, it takes guys like us a while to wrap our heads around it. I wish I would have wrapped my head around it in 2011 when I first heard about it. I could have bought Bitcoin for about a dollar a piece, and now it's almost forty thousand dollars a piece. But, you know, everybody has a story like that. But it's definitely something the the younger generation is embracing, and it's only going to continue to spread. It's not going away, Joel. It's not a fad. It, it's here to stay, and it could. I think it has the potential to actually revolutionize the way the world uses money. Yeah, give me an example. Because I've been hearing that from a lot of people. Give me an example of what the biggest advantage is that you have over using the $20 bill in my wallet, which I'm not sure I even have one. Because there's no counterparty risk. You own your digital assets. And if I want to send Joel Heitkamp some Bitcoin and send him some digital assets, I don't have to route it through a bank. Or if I give Joel a check, uh, Joel doesn't have to go to the bank and put it in the bank and wait for it to show up in his account. It's instantaneous transfer of valuable digital assets between consenting parties. And with no other people involved, it's quick and it's efficient and there's little fees. So, Jack, what backs it? I mean, what, what is there behind it to say that Joel Heitkamp isn't lying, uh, that that I have all this, that it's, that it's simply an electronic uh, gimmick? I mean... I, I realize you know it, you understand it, and, and for you that's a ridiculous question, but that's how new it is to me. I mean, what back? It, yeah. Yeah, I still believe that, that money is backed by the government, by gold and silver, even though you and I both know that there's not enough there to back it. And so I have to ask you, what backs it? The the blockchain backs cryptocurrencies, and the blockchain is is just think of it as a, as a huge file cabinet that is storing records of every single digital currency transaction. There's a record of all of them. And they all have to pass through this in order for the transaction to be successful. So you can't get ripped off by somebody pretending to send you digital currency and it shows that you received it, but you didn't really get it, that, that doesn't happen. You can send it to the wrong address, just like you can make a deposit into the wrong account number, but as far as there being fraudulent cryptocurrency transactions, I haven't heard of those on any kind of a wide scale. Is, is there any type of uh, regulation to it, Jack? You know, when I think about banks, I think, banks, I think about, uh, you know, the FDIC. I'm, I think about places that, that monitor them and make sure that they're doing business properly uh, and that they're insured up to so many dollars. Uh, I, I mean, what, is there anything that... that uh, you look at that uh, the government uh, takes a look at crypto or is it really bypass all of that? No, the government's definitely, you know, getting more involved and they want to crack down. Um, you might recall when you filed your taxes last year, one of the questions they asked you was whether or not you owned or purchased any cryptocurrency at all of any kind in the past year. The IRS is trying to figure out who's got crypto because they treat it like a, like a, uh, a long-term asset you know, like when you sell a stock and you, you need to pay your capital gains taxes, that's how they're treating crypto transactions. The government always wants to get their piece, and uh, the government is going to do whatever they need to do to make sure they get their piece. And I think the government is going to try and do whatever it needs to do to make sure that cryptocurrency doesn't replace the U.S. dollar, right? The government doesn't want to be able to stop printing money at will to fund all these various obligations that it has. I won't get down the libertarian road there, Joe. Um, but <laughs> I like that is, side of you, Jack. Just know that. I've always respected that. I think the government's going to come in and try and, and 
you know, start some stuff with crypto because they don't like the, they, they don't have any control over it. And that's something governments don't like. They're going to try to control it, but I don't think they're going to be successful because that ship has long sailed. And I don't think there's much they can do about it other than try and tax it. Well, and, and tax it is what they do to me over my money. I mean, th th that is what they do. And so why isn't it fair for them to tax crypto? I mean, I know that the whole concept behind crypto is stay out of my business. Uh, the, the banks don't need to be involved in my life. It, this is a, de a deal between Joel and Jack. A and yep. uh, th that's a private deal and it's our private business. But, you know, if, if I pay you X amount of money to work or to do whatever, there's a tax liability that comes with that. So why shouldn't there be here? I'm not saying there shouldn't be, and I, I think the government is trying to get, get a hold of that. Um, obviously, there's those in our society that, you know, transact with each other on larger transactions for cash that the government doesn't know about, and there's people that are trading Bitcoin back and forth without the government knowing about it. So there's always going to be uh, those who want to evade it are going to be able to evade it, and those that want to, you know, fly right and not get on the IRS's radar, they're going to do the proper reporting so so they don't get in trouble that way. I think it's just it's just up to the to the individual and their comfort level of how much risk they want to take as far as being compliant. So there's no risk again getting hacked here. Uh, I mean, you, you got to realize that today I paid someone and I wrote out a check. OK, I mean, I, you know, I, that's just who I am. Uh, you know, I, it took me a while to start using nothing but my debit card, okay? So th there's no real risk here to the individual that holds all that uh, digital currency. Well, there's always going to be some risk, right, Joel? I mean, your local bank could get hacked and your savings account could get wiped out by some sort of crazy hack. It doesn't happen very often. Cryptocurrency, there has been attacks on various levels of the cryptocurrency world, but they're few and far between. And the security is just so high. I mean, I would trust cryptocurrency more than I would trust a bank at this point as far as security goes. And one other point I want to make, Joel, you know, I have to give a little credit to gold and silver here. If people are looking to get out of the U.S. dollar, which is happening a lot lately because its value is plummeting rapidly and has been for some time, you know, if you're unsure about crypto, I really would recommend gold and silver as another alternative asset class. It's been it's been money for 5,000 years, Joel. It's going to be money for another 5,000. Well, can we take that conversation another day? I mean, this has been so interesting, Jack. Uh, you know, we're going to call you back if we can and, and maybe go down the gold and silver road, okay? I'd love to get on any time, buddy. Jack Seaman, ladies and gentlemen, never been afraid to talk about what the future might hold and never been afraid to say, you know what, government, get out of my way. I just want to do business. And I've always respected that. Uh, let's take a little break. When we come back, Sarah Heinrich right here as we continue to go down the road. Howdy, folks. It's the Caneline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar. Sink your teeth into our famous Caneline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan. And yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. Hi, Hunter Ellis here for Night Hero Binoculars by Atomic Beam. These binoculars let you see anything, even in pitch black darkness. Gotcha. The secrets are powerful wide angle atomic beam laser that reveals objects up to 150 yards away hidden by darkness. During the day, Night Hero gives you 10 times magnification. And when the sun goes down, press the Night Bright button to see clearly in the dark. Light up garbage eating critters or spot thieves before they even get close. Call or click now and get Night Hero binoculars for just $39.99. Order right now and you can double it. Plus, get our best selling atomic beam flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship them to you free. This team TV special offer is not available on Amazon. You can get it all, but you have to order now. 
Call 1-800-619-1091. That's 1-800-619-1091. Or visit ByNightHero.com. That's ByNightHero.com. Order now. Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury, after taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680 non attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Welcome back to Down the Road. Uh, the person I'm going to bring in, you know. Uh, that's right. Many of you farmers and ranchers count on her for a lot of your information. You've seen her on TV. You've heard her on radio. Uh, and there's a reason that she holds the position she does. Uh, Sarah Heinrich is farm and ranch director with Where I Work, KFGO. But she's also uh, the head of Growing Harvest Ag, which is picked up by a whole lot of other radio stations and called upon to do media in many different capacities and if you don't think this young woman is good at what she does uh, then we can start rolling out all the awards she's won but I think she'd be mad at me for doing that. Sarah Heinrich good to have you coming down the road with us. Well thank you and thank you for the nice introduction. Well uh, you know if you could just turn your camera as somebody <laughs> who went to UND maybe a little bit <laughs> North Dakota back there. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I knew you were going to do something. Uh, Sarah, I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, for, first off, the, the growing harvest ag. Describe to people better than what I just did what that is. So the Growing Harvest Ag Network is really just a network of radio stations um, taking our agriculture content that we're developing, uh, myself and Rusty Halverson, who's also with the Growing Harvest Ag Network, and we're basically distributing that out and it really reaching, um, well, I guess it would be a four-state area at least, and in the smallest capacity as well as into Canada. And so it's ag news that we're developing, looking at across the region and seeing what's going on across everybody's areas and then being able to distribute that out to multiple radio stations, Sioux Falls, Williston, Fargo, uh, you name it, it kind of travels the four state area. And, and I can tell you as somebody who works with Sarah, it's gonna continue to grow. Uh, there's no question about that. <laughs> Sarah, I wanted to talk to you about, about the meat packers. I wanna talk to you about you know, how they got hacked, the, the ransomware attack on the meat packers. Everybody's pointing to Russia. Um, it, it seems as though we keep using uh, Russia as uh, the, the, the individual that keeps doing this to us. And if that's the case, if that's the country that's doing it, I don't know why we haven't punched him in the nose more. And I think it's upon the Biden administration to do just that. But describe to the, to the viewing audience what that does to the rancher and the meatpacker. So JBS isn't just something that's in the North American country. I mean, this is something that's operating in 15 different countries across the world. This has become a global issue. So they had IT systems in both North America and uh, in North America, as well as in Australia, IT systems that were hacked into. They say none of the backup servers had been harmed. But what this really means when you break it down to the rancher level is if we aren't moving cattle through that system on a daily basis, we kind of have a situation like what we had with COVID. And so we're seeing this packing industry getting backed up and we're seeing backlogs because the number of head that are should be being processed on a daily basis aren't being processed because of the pack packing plants that have shut down. Now, if it happens for a day or two, most experts are saying that it's not gonna have a, a huge impact. And um, I mean, it'll certainly have an impact, but now if this is prolonged for weeks on end, experts are saying, you know, it, it's gonna be close to what we saw with COVID, do I think we're better handle? Do I think we're better to handle it now than we would have been, let's say, prior to COVID? Absolutely. 
because we've now are as a packing industry have learned uh, to be a little bit more flexible, I guess you could say. And I think that there were definitely some lessons learned throughout the past year. So, so why though? I mean, I still need beef, beef on the counter. Mm -hmm. I eat a lot of beef. Mm -hmm. You eat a lot of beef. I mean, wh why stop slaughtering? I mean, what is it about this hack that makes that, that meat packer not be able to do business? I think it's just the capabilities right now, and they're really trying to just uh, secure the system, make sure that they have everything secure before they open back up again. You know, when you think of, I was thinking about this myself, when you think of how much is done electronically now, I mean, time cards are even done electronically right now, right? You punch in, you punch out, everything is done, uh, you know, via electronics. And so it's going to be interesting to really see how all of this plays out. Like, I think everyone's just hopeful that they're going to be able to get back online sooner versus later, because we need to get these cattle moving through the system again and it's not just cattle i mean jbs is big they're the biggest with the beef they're the biggest when it comes to you know the poultry and then i believe it's the, they're the second largest when it comes to pork and so they're a major player throughout the entire meat industry it's not just a cattle issue you know you've brought to people's attention all the time about how the the meat packers have a monopoly and jbs of course being one of those meat packers how we need more uh, meat processors out there, you know, in the U.S. Does this show that? Is this, can this be used now as a tool to, to make sure the government, if nothing else, realizes that you and all the, the, the ranchers out there really are, you know, subject to the whim of the packing industry? Do, is this a good time to, to have it be an opportunity, not just a loss of revenue? There's the big four, and this has been in the news so much within the last, let's just even say six months, right? We have stuff that's moving through Congress right now, trying to take a better handle as far as what's all taking place in the packing industry. We have the U.S. Cattlemen's Association that's working on it. We have NCBA that's working on it. Everyone is urging Congress to do something about looking into transparency and making sure that we have fair cattle prices moving forward. This probably, this type of event probably highlights more than ever just how dependent we are upon the big four because when you have an operation of this size and this capacity go down i mean it's national news headlines everywhere right now with people talking about grocery store shortages and meat shortages and i think we're all hoping that it doesn't come to that but i think it also highlights just how dependent we are upon these four big packers that have pretty much control of what's happening within the supply chain. Did the other three have an opportunity to step up? Did this provide them an opportunity or were they asked uh, to step up and do more processing? I haven't seen anything on that. And, you know, we need to remember, too, that there's a lot with the going on um, right now with line speeds. That's being watched really closely right now as far as how fast everything is getting processed for, you know, employee safety and whatnot. And so will there be an opportunity for them to process more? That's hard to say because they're under really strict regulations as well right now. And so will we see what we saw with COVID? Probably not because we aren't seeing every single one of the meatpacking plants being impacted. We're seeing this one but this one is a really, really big player. You know, I know that both you, I, and many others uh, don't want to see any more government in our life. I mean, you know, just just let you and and Rich grow uh, crop and and raise cattle and and stay out of our way, and we'll feed the world. I get it. I understand it. But is this a perfect example of where we need government? And and government, to some degree, has failed us in, in protecting or. Is it simply that the meat packer themselves have done a, a, a bad job of running a system that, put, that clearly now is subject to the, to the hacking by the Russians? I think it's a, a scary situation because if it's happened once, could it happen again? Do we need to have more measures in place? Absolutely. But, you know, I mean, the meatpacking industry isn't the only one that I think is is just secluded or what you could say that this could happen to. I mean, they could have really taken a part of any type of hacking on really any of our big industries. But instead, it was a hacking going on to the meat industry, which obviously can cripple a nation when you're messing with its food supply. And th I think that's one of the big things that we need to, to remember and look at here. And so it's not that JBS was just the only one that was secluded to something like this happening. This certainly could have happened. Um, to any other, any company or any entity. 
Sir, I want to talk about the drought. I, I don't want to lose the opportunity to visit with you about that and also the frost. I mean, two big issues, the frost mm -hmm. being spotty. I, I get that. But uh, the, the drought and, and where we're at, it, it would seem to me traveling around North Dakota the way I have that in some cases we need rain, we want rain, we still got a crop to raise. But in some cases, it's not going to work this year, we had hoped, period. I think everyone is getting uh, more and more nervous, you could say, to say the least. I mean, we're talking 52 of 53 North Dakota counties are experiencing some sort of drought level at the moment. It's getting to be really scary and it's getting to be very dire. Speaking from putting on another hat and just putting on a rancher standpoint, we have sorted our cows differently this year and we have put together a call cow group and they will be the first cows to go down the road if we get to that point. We've already contacted people about buying hay to get us through the summer, which is something we haven't done. Um, in, oh, I think the last time that we did this, I want to say it was back in the early 2000s when we hit a drought that was quite this dire, this bad. We were buying extra feed resources. And I know we're not the only ranchers out there who are experiencing uh, what everyone, I mean, we're going through it just like everyone else's. This isn't a county by county. This is really widespread this time. So how much is hay worth now versus what it was worth two years ago? Well, that's going to be really interesting. And so I think a lot of these prices are only going to be on the rise. Most people haven't sold it yet because they haven't made it yet. And so it's going to be interesting to see what people they're going to be charging. When you talk to people, nobody's really set a price on it yet as far as what they want. Um, but I mean, we're well aware that we're going to be paying more than what we would have paid, let's say, last year. I mean, our alpha, alpha, alpha right now is standing maybe six inches tall. Um, we also ranch with my folks out in Mandan and they were saying, you know, their alfalfa crop is almost non-existent and there's not gonna be much of any of a first cutting this year. And so it's just, it's so widespread. And so I think a lot of producers in North Dakota are probably gonna be dependent upon some of those hay producers out in Minnesota in hopes that they can maybe send a little bit this way because we know that Minnesota has received more rain than what we've received in North Dakota. Last one, I promise. Uh in terms of the, the the frost that hit and the damage that's been done, I know you've been doing a lot of investigating in terms of the regions that got hit so hard. Let people know. That just did much more damage than I think anyone expected. And it was basically the perfect scenario. We're talking 31 degrees, and so it was spotty. And so those low-lying areas it took out, it left some of those crop on some of that higher ground. And so there's a lot of spotty reseeding that's happening right now, where in some cases it might have been better off if it would have taken out just the entire field so you could just go in and get after it and do it. You know, producers had their equipment put away. They had their drills and their planters out, you know, put in the shed. And now we're pulling that back out again. It's taking a lot of extra time. And it hit a wider area than I think a lot of people expected. It wasn't just pockets here and there. I mean, it hit basically anywhere from eastern North Dakota into Stutzman County. And then, you know, there's also reports of it being even lower in the western part of the state. The only hope was that your crop was young enough that it didn't get hit by the frost, but we'll be doing replanting ourselves. And yeah. so we've been on crop scouting and there's more to replant than what we are expecting. Sarah, always good to talk to you. Let's do it again sometime. Let's do it again. Sarah Heinrich, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, Jeb Williams with the North Dakota Game and Fish right after this as we continue our trip down the road. Hey everybody, I'm Doug Billings, your host of The Right Side with Doug Billings on Beck News. We bring you high profile guests, ladies and gentlemen, exclusive guests. Now, you're not gonna see these guests in most of the mainstream media outlets. Another thing that I do here is give guests a platform to speak freely. You're not gonna see me censor anybody. Please join us, won't you? Weeknights right here on Beck TV and online at Beck.News. Cheers. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.
Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three Cool Turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more Cool Turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real Cool Turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at CoolTurtle.com. Order now. We're the ladies of Another View, bringing you a fresh view on local issues. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Oh my gosh. Isn't that, that the most condescending, crazy. rude email you've ever on received? Well, welcome to National the third News. term of a certain president. I really believe that. And different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. Hey Bucks fans, if you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit BismarckBucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! You know, in North Dakota, we love the outdoors in many different ways. I realize that. There's a lot of hikers out there. There's a lot of bikers out there. There's a lot of ways that people enjoy uh, a state as beautiful as North Dakota and the opportunities that we have for outdoors. For me, uh, one of the ways that I enjoy it is hunting and fishing. I, I was raised hunting and fishing. Uh, and, and so if you hunt and fish, if you love doing that, then you, you know what it's like uh, to work with, and I say with, uh, North Dakota Game and Fish and the way that they provide an opportunity to enjoy all of that. In other words, I'm a Game and Fish fan. Uh, there's been times, you know, that I've been checked, that I've been sitting there scratching my head going, I hope, I hope, I hope, and luckily I've been right. But uh, the, the truth of the matter is they do a good job. Uh, if you know North Dakota Game and Fish, then you know who Jeb Williams is. Uh, Jeb is the the Chief of Wildlife with North Dakota Game and Fish. And Jeb, good to have you coming down the road with us. Great to be here, Joel. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Okay, what day is it in terms of your application for a deer license? It is the day. It is uh, the day, June 2nd. If You know, we all know how important November is to people in North Dakota for deer hunting. But, boy, today, you know, today, if you miss today, um, that 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 opportunity in November, the the odds go down quite a bit as far as you participating. So at midnight tonight, Joel, if you don't have your deer application in, then you're going to be subject to what is remaining in the second lottery, which, of course, any of the antler tags are gone. And uh, it's it going to be antlerless licenses only and obviously in particular units as well. And I have to tell you, sitting on a golf cart yesterday at a cherry golf charity golf tournament, you can do it. You can do it from your cell phone. You, you can make it happen. The one mistake I was making was nobody's but mine. Uh, and that was just because I didn't take the time to, to read the above. Uh, you, you guys make it very simple. And when you say midnight tonight at, at, uh, uh, you know, at 1150, if you go in there, you're going to be able to make that application. It's not going to take that long, Jeb. No, that's that's correct, Joel. And there and there will be people that do that. I, you know, it happens where people do forget about it. And of course, nowadays you get a lot of people texting around, reminding people about the deadline. And and uh, there will be people that realize late, very late in the game tonight, that they need to get that in. But as you said, our programmers and folks have done a really nice job of making it a very user friendly system, especially if your deer hunting unit and your deer choices stay the same year after year. It's basically just a matter of you logging into the system and 
the application process, the online application process, puts everything through just like it did last year. And so it's a, it's a very user-friendly system. Doesn't take much time at all, which again, you found out yesterday. Jeb, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, about deer hunting in general. It wasn't that long ago where uh, people like me were able to shoot an extra doe. Uh, people like me, I mean, we, we had a lot of deer stacked up one year in my hunting camp, uh, and then everything backed off. You know, it, it truly went to a lottery system where, you know, you crossed your fingers and said, man, I hope I got my buck tag this year. Um, are we in a better place now, or are we still in that, hey, there aren't as many deer out there. You're going to have to bide your time and let's build the population back up. So I think that's a great topic, Joel. I, and I guess the way I'll answer that quickly is we're in a better, we're, we're, we're in a better spot than what we were eight, nine years ago. Um, you know, we, we bottomed out at a 30 year low for deer license numbers back in 2013. And so uh, 2012 and 2013. I mean, we hadn't had that few deer licenses since uh, since the 1980s, and so we're we're in a better spot. You know, this year we have issued 72,200 licenses, which is a sixth consecutive year of increased number of licenses, and so that's a good thing. Anytime we issue more deer licenses, we just mean we know that means more opportunity for folks who want to deer hunt in North Dakota, and we know that's a lot of people. And, and we really have in some some way, shape and form, Joel, two, a kind of a tale of, of, of two sides of the state. We've seen deer recovery, uh, the deer rebound rates much higher in the western part of the state compared to the eastern part of the state. And so that is uh, so the deer numbers in the eastern part of the state have have lagged behind a little bit when it comes to those numbers increasing. And unfortunately, the eastern part of the state is where we have the highest population of uh, areas and to where we have the most applications and most hunters and those types of things so the so the waiting game can get to be long and can get to be frustrating for those in some units in the eastern part of the state so as far as the unit goes and as far as uh, your tools to manage i've, I've been surveyed uh, you know i've been called i've been a lot of different ways where you've tried to put that data no doubt into your system but how are there any units that you point to and say look this just isn't a problem there uh we don't have the same problem and and so we can increase it in that unit where we we have to decrease it in this other and if people don't want to hunt in that unit i i can't force them but as far as the unit goes i mean the unit I, that i hunt in jeb those ranchers uh, those farmers still claim there's a lot of deer out there and I'll be honest with you. We haven't had a hard time finding finding our deer to har our deer to harvest. Good, no, and, that, and that's good news. And and we know that in each and every unit, Joel, that there are that, that we're not decimated of deer in North Dakota. We we just know that in 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 certain units that the deer numbers overall are smaller than what they were, obviously, like what you were referring to a number of years ago. And then we have other parts, different parts of the state where. I, I guess I don't know if I would say that we have too many deer, but there there might be some people that that would think that we do, and where we have actually provided some flexibility in our licensing system, which does allow people to still get multiple deer licenses uh, if their licenses remaining in in some units in the southwest and in, in western part of the state. So. One of the things that's important about this discussion, Joel, is the beauty of our system is we have 38 units across the state when it comes to managing deer. And it gives us the flexibility year in and year out to be able to try to adjust those numbers and to try to, uh, to, try to address specific issues in each one of those units differently. And so the answer to your question is, yeah, we, we look at each individual unit quite a bit different than we do others based on information that we have and that we, we receive through survey and data information, but then also through the social aspect of it as, as far as people on the ground and on the landscape as far as what they're seeing. Uh, when I think of uh, disease when it comes to deer, I think of Western North Dakota. I don't know if that's fair or not, but what are you seeing about the condition of deer out there, Jeff? So I, th I think it's, I think good. Uh, you know, we, we obviously have chronic wasting disease in North Dakota now. We've had it since 2009. 
Um, we were fortunate for a number of years where chronic wasting disease did not spread uh, into, into other areas until uh, four years ago when we did have chronic wasting disease show up in, in the northwest part of the state. And so that is a concern. It's an issue. And, and we are uh, you know, continuing to, to address that and, and trying to do our best to slow the spread of chronic wasting disease so, so it doesn't get through the entire state of North Dakota. Okay, last one, Jeb. Um, I, I'm seeing a lot of uh, Canadian geese out there, and, and they're taking out a lot of crop. Are you getting some complaints from farmers? We are. Um, we, we know that, especially that southeast part of the state, particularly this year, uh, we're really hearing a lot. And, and you know, I know it's frustrating for folks, and one of the things I do want to put out there, though, is there are some tools in place through the Game and Fish Department and USDA Wildlife Services. We have a partnership, those folks, to where there's hazing permits, there's actually kill permits, there's nest destruction permits, to where there are some good tools in place for landowners to be very specific about that, uh, about the overabundance of Canada geese in certain areas. And so if they haven't contacted us already, sure put out a, a note for folks to make sure to do that because there are some tools in place. Are they absolutely perfect? No, they're not, but are there some tools that can help folks out? Yes, there are. One last thing I'll tell the folks out there where, while we're talking outdoors, which is on that deer application that you have, I hope you filled out so that the money uh, can go to plots if you find yourself unsuccessful. Uh, it's a great program, uh, and Jeb, that's a program that you folks have to be very proud of. Your cable TV is still going to be on the next month if you lose 30 bucks in that application. Is that fair, Jeb? Thanks for the plug on that, Joel. That you know, our plots program is very popular. The number one issue we continue to hear about in North Dakota is is hunting access, and the plots program helps address that issue. And so, it, the additional dollars we do receive through that that volunteer uh, donation is certainly goes to a great cause if people feel that that's what they choose to do. So, I appreciate you saying that. Keep doing what you do, uh, Jeb. We'll talk again another day. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate the visit. You bet. Let's come back and talk a little bit about one of the big issues that everyone's facing out there, which is the lack of employees to take jobs. We'll talk about it right here when we come back to you down the road. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan, and yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. 
Vox fans, it's Kid and Mascot Night at the Bismarck Event Center on Saturday, June 5th. Join us and all your favorite local mascots as the Bucks take on the Sioux Falls Storm. Proceeds from our generous sponsors in the 50-50 raffle will be donated to Brave the Shame. Bring the family out to the nationally televised IFL Game of the Week on June 5th at a special 7.05 kickoff time for great entertainment. Free ticket vouchers can be printed from the Bucks social media accounts. Get yours now or call 701-595-0771 for more ticket information. I'm going to tell you something that you already know, or at least I, uh, I think you already know, which is if you talk to any small business man or woman, somebody that's out there, uh, hung out a shingle and said, you know what, I got a product for you, I have a service for you. If you talk to any one of them, 90% um, or more is going to look you in the eye and say, I can't find the workers. I don't have the workers. I, I've got a help wanted sign hung out and uh, I can't fill my staff. So it's about jobs, jobs, and jobs. You know, there was a time in my life when I had a full-time job and a bunch of 1099s coming my way because I was doing part-time work just to try to get ahead. That's not happening anymore, and I don't know why. Uh, I, I don't know why. If you look at a lot of our summer youth, uh, it'd be very interesting to see how many of them hold part-time positions during the summer. Maybe it's just the fact that as a nation, we've gotten more wealthy and maybe a little bit more spoiled. I don't know. It's certainly worthy of a conversation. Um, going back to those businesses, going back to the needs of those businesses, going back to not just necessarily a small business, but a big manufacturer, uh, for example. Let's take a look at how we fill that need, how we fill that void. Do we do it through higher education? You know, I would hope so. I think that a lot of our trade and tech schools are examples of places that turn out a fabulous product. They're, the young men and women that go there uh, start out a career that can take them to a place where they're very successful financially and, quite frankly, rewarding in their work. So are we doing a good job of getting kids into those seats and having them take uh, the courses we need them to take to fill the need that we have out there in society? I don't think we are. I don't think we're there yet. I, I think we're doing a bad job of marketing as a state. I think that we need to go into those uh, classrooms. I, I'm not big on, on how guidance counselors have been doing in, in relation to telling, you know, little Johnny or little Jane that, hey, look, you know, you've been a C student. Uh, you're probably not going to end up in law school. Uh, you need to at least begin at this level uh, and then work your way up to that level. Uh, instead of being in a classroom of 300, start out in a classroom of 30. You know, I think we need to do that in a better way. We give people an opportunity to make their own choices in so many ways when it comes to higher education. And so are we keeping up with what the industry itself wants and what we educate? I don't know. I know that that alone is worthy of a conversation. I know that that alone is something that if I was on the State Board of Higher Education, I would be looking at. And I would do it in many cases remotely. I realize that if you're going to teach somebody how to weld, if you're going to teach a mechanic how to fix, you're going to have to have some hands on. You are. I get it. I understand it. If you're the North Dakota State College of Science, there's some things that you can't do over Zoom. You can't do virtually. I mean, you have to do, you have to do it in a way that you can see that student and talk to them hands on. That being said, are we? Are we? The industry itself is giving out more internships than you can possibly have. The industries themselves are going to more students and saying, listen, I will make sure and pay your college debt. I will guarantee you a salary of X amount, and I will pay for all your health insurance. And they're still not getting those workers. So why is it? I mean, why is it? You know, I, I think less people are, are attending institutions like the one that I just talked about, and they're doing so because, quite frankly, they're not worried about opportunity. I, I think that many of the people we just talk, uh, talked about are individuals that don't need to go into the higher ed system to achieve the very goals we just talked about. 
Now, in the end, is that diploma that's going to go on the wall something of value? Absolutely. Is it something that's proven uh, time after time to advance your career at a higher rate and make sure, quite frankly, you make more money? Absolutely. That bachelor's degree is worth more than that associate's degree. Uh, if you just look at peer statistics uh, and generalities over time. But when you have a car dealership and that car dealership, uh, like the one that I know uh, in my home area is saying, listen, we'll pay you 80 grand. We will pay uh, for your college debt. We'll give you 500 bucks a month uh, towards a vehicle and we'll pay 100 percent of your health care. Just come work with us. We don't care if you come in with all the area of expertise. We'll train you. We'll get you there. Now, I'm sorry, but if somebody would have came to me with that attitude and with that offer when I was young, I'd have been all over it. I would have been. I would have been sitting there going, wow, you know, this is an opportunity. Instead of going, I hope I can find a job. I hope I can just find a job. And if you think that all the people that are working uh, for X amount an hour at minimum wage and 10 bucks an hour, if you think they're all young people, you're wrong. You're wrong. There are a lot of our elderly that are working for minimum wage or a little bit more. We can't have that. Part of this debate has to be what we pay our workers. I know there's a lot of folks right now that are uncomfortable with what I just said. I would argue tough. You're going to have to get over it. Because if there's anything that came out of COVID, what came out was examples of what you could or should get paid. And again, that's a conversation for a whole nother day. You're looking at somebody who supported strongly uh, getting rid of that extra unemployment benefit because it was time for people to go back to work. But I promise you, we're going to talk about it more right here as we go down the road. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month, so call now and make going to the dentist carefree. Call 1-800-416-5739 to receive your Carefree Dental Card information kit. 1-800-416-5739. Call now. I can't say enough good things about these nano hearing aids. Real people talking about nano hearing aids. The hearing quality is great. Until now, hearing aids used to be too expensive for the average person. Until nano. Call now and you'll get your nano hearing aids for only $297. You'll save $100. When you buy one hearing aid, Nano will give you a second hearing aid free. Call right now. 1-800-213-3815. Spas, etc. Yeah, yeah. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance Spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, chuckle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury, after taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, 
a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. You know what? You're free, aren't you? That's right. Uh, when's the last time you put on a mask? When's the last time you were required uh, to put on a mask? It had to be in a business somewhere because, uh, you know, I keep one in my pickup. I keep one in my motorhome. I keep one where I need one. Uh, every vehicle I think I own have one, has one, except i got to get one in my motorcycle because I haven't rid that, rode, uh, rode that for a while. But uh, you're free. You're free to get out there. And what's going on? There's a lot of things going on. I'm going to head to Jamestown and do my radio show tomorrow because the state uh, Class B baseball and softball championships are going on. Uh, go. Go to these events. Go to those Little League events. Go. Play ball yourself. Go golf. Go do all of those things. You're free. It's a different summer than what it was last year. It really is. For you doubters, I think you were proven wrong. For you believers who, have, uh, who are still very scared, I think you're wrong. I think that we're now in a place where we as a country and as individuals who hopefully have uh, both of our shots, or one, uh, if it's Johnson's, but I hope you get out there. I hope you recognize that it is a different world, that you can go out and have some fun. I've been doing that. I have. I've been getting out there and, and just seeing folks and getting a chance to, to hug Aunt Memory again uh, because, you know what, she's finally free. She couldn't go down to the cities. She couldn't go see her kids. She couldn't go see her grandkids. She couldn't go see her great-grandchild. That's too bad. But you know what? It's the truth. It's the truth of what's been going on. And so with all these activities, with everything going on, I hope you find your way to Medora. I hope you find your way to the rodeo in Abercrombie. I hope you find your way to Binford, where the big boys are coming in. That's right, the PBR is coming in, and um, I hope that you get to these places, open up your wallet, and say, you know what, it's good to spend a buck or two to support some of these local events. You know, it's just time. It is really time. And I think that the weather, as sad as it is for farmers and ranchers out there, uh, in the next, well, week, you're going to see it very conducive to what you want to do outside if you're just looking for entertainment. I'll be back next week. Until then, good ride with you, folks.